Good morning. It is 10 o'clock. Welcome to Lincoln. We're live. We're here every Sunday morning from 10 until 11. And uh, we've got a great guest lined up for you today. Uh, none other than Mr. Leslie Isaiah Gaines. How you doing? I'm happy to be here with you. It's always good to see you, Brother Gaines. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, you're still practicing law around the city. You've been in town since the late 60s, early 70s. And, yes, yes. Uh, you've been before many juries. And uh, uh, just thinking about the O.J. trial uh, a, a week ago, found guilty. And, and uh, the jury, a lot of people say, well, they wanted to get him anyway. They're going back to when uh, the Nicole uh simpson case and uh but you had you had a case the other day and um yes. they were your client was found not guilty what was that case well it was a very difficult case i have to tell you lincoln a young man i'll just call him john jones that's not his real name but even when we get people found not guilty it's kind of hard to live down the allegations so i don't try to spare them the real name but was a charge of three counts of aggravated arson and regretfully two Cincinnati five fighters were injured in this alleged event. And some people thought it was an open and shut airtight case of conviction, but he insisted along with his family, we want a jury trial. And people told him, no, you don't want a jury. In Hamilton County, man, get an all white jury. I said, well, it doesn't bother me. In 36 years, most of our jurors have been all white or one black, perhaps. Yeah. I say, we want justice, we don't care who the jury is. So at any rate, we went down to trial with Judge Melba Moss with a jury that happened to be, I think the breakup was 11 white and one black on the jury. But regardless of that breakdown, they came together mm -hmm. and unanimously reached a verdict of not guilty on all three counts of aggravated arson, save that young man maybe 30 years, I don't know what he was facing, and sent him home to be with his family. And I thank God for him and his family because they prayed all the way through. At 30 years, that's a long time. Now, uh, uh, there's a, a TV show, uh, a new TV show that comes on, it's called Raising the Bar. And uh, these uh, prosecutors and attorneys, they, you know, always making deals for the clients, you know, okay, we'll give you three years uh, if you plead guilty to this. We'll, we'll, we'll give you four years if you plead uh, guilty to that. Yeah. And they throw around these years like it's just nothing. And, and right. even if the guy is innocent, they'll scare him to death. Yes. Now, if you go to a jury trial and they find you guilty, you could get 20 years. Now, right. that scares me. And I forgot the exact number of years he was facing, but I knew it was a very, very serious case and his family stood strong and Lincoln I've had people over the years even charged with aggravated murder that would tell me look I know they're trying to give me life some would say I even know they're trying to put me in the chair but give me 12 in that box yeah. and sometimes even though the case looks impossible you can get 12 jurors from Hamilton County that mix up the break up from all neighborhoods there were jurors on here from uh, uh, Norwood, all types of communities here, but when they listen to all of the evidence, in spite of the fact that some people thought it was open and shut because regretfully two firefighters were injured in a place was just pretty much destroyed and they yeah. thought he had done it, the jury said, hey, regardless of all that, fairness and justice requires a finding of not guilty on everything. So I'm glad to see there's still justice in Hamilton County, but as you know, oftentimes you got to fight for it. Yes, yes. Now, I want to hear from some people out there at 513-381-3838. Uh, uh, have you ever been uh, accused of a crime, knew you were not guilty, but were urged to go ahead and cop a plea and take uh, a, a lesser amount of time that you could have received if you had gone to jury trial? Now, you always were, did the prosecutor offer you a deal with this guy? Or? There were plea negotiations along the way, but here's one thing I go back to the old days. When I had clients tell me, look, I'm facing a lot of time. I want all or nothing at all. Yeah. Bring me all the time you got or send me home free. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell my clients, I said, look, it just takes guts and some money mm -hmm. to stand in there and fight with the jury. Yeah. Because sometime if they get you, you're going to pay a lot of years yeah. for it. Yeah. But it takes guts. You can't go in there weak. Many cases, cases are played out. Most cases are resolved with plea negotiation. But every now and then a person says, hey, I don't care what the threat is, put them in that box and let the jury bring it back as they yeah. see it. Yeah, I think if, if, if I'm guilty, 
I might go ahead and say, I'm going to take this plea, <laughs> you know. But if I'm not guilty, I'm going to hesitate on pleading that I'm, I'm guilty and not, you know, not go ahead and take a chance with the jury. But if, in Hamilton County, that could, I mean, that could go against you. You know, it's, it's you know, this is a tough uh, county when you've got a jury up there and most of the time not of your peers. I'll tell you, nigga, one year, I think it was 1988, I was blessed to be in New York City doing a TV show, I think at the time, with Effie Bell and Jerry Spence and Melvin Bell. They said, man, if you can win a case in Hamilton County, <laughs> you can win one any place yeah, in the world. Yeah. They said that county is known across the country. It's staunch law and order. I said, hey, we've had good success here. We've won some, we've lost some, and we just try to get a jury, regardless of race or background, to look at the facts and evidence and say justice requires a finding of not guilty. All right, we've got attorney Leslie Isaiah Gaines with us this morning. If you want to jump on board, 381-3838, 381-3838, 381-3838, or 651-3838. 513 is the area code. We'll take your calls. We'll take a break and come right back after these messages. And we are back live. Lincoln Where Live is the program. I've got attorney Leslie Isaiah Gaines with us this morning. And of course, uh, he's tried uh, many a cases here in Hamilton County and uh, 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 jury. Uh, what, what, what do jur jurors think when they're deliberating? Uh, do they look at strictly the evidence? Do they try to figure out if the guy is innocent or guilty themselves just by looking at him? How do they go? What, ha what do they tell you that takes place back in the deliberating room? You know, Lincoln, that's so interesting. You mentioned that. We talked to the jurors, some of them after the case, and some of them even wanted to be here with you today because they thought it was so important to let the public know how jurors consider everything from the way you look coming in there. Because yeah. see, I tell some of my clients, you're sitting at the table looking guilty already. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hold your head up. I don't care what you're trying to face them. Be a man. Stand up for whatever it is. They weigh you. They weigh your family. The dress, they weigh the dress. way you dress. The way you look, the way you comb your hair, wear your pants, all of those kind of things. Now, a judge will tell them they are not supposed to be persuaded by any yeah. bias, prejudice, or sympathy. But we live in a real world mm -hmm. where what you think of people mm -hmm. can come into that jury room. Now, I'm glad on this young man's case, I'll tell you, there were two blacks potentially on the jury. And one of them was excused by the prosecutor. And I said, I've never known this prosecutor in all my years of dealing with him for him to just excuse anybody because of race but i had to raise a challenge i said i got subject to this juror being excused because i say here this man is faced with these charges he's only got 12 in the box only two blacks in the box and here you get rid of one of them yeah i objected <laughs> even up to the bench he said well i didn't excuse her because she was black I excuse her because she showed the amen when you were talking. Oh, said, boy. Okay. Oh, boy. But I'm glad that yeah. remaining black, because yeah. I told the jury, even though I thought it might have been an all-white jury, he's entitled to a jury of his peers. Yes, yes. Regardless, a jury of his peers. But this one black drill was so important on this case because there were a lot of socioeconomical considerations. Different people live different ways in different neighborhoods, and she was able to explain to the other 11 that what my young man was saying as a defense really was true in the neighborhood because there were times that I thought there were some things being mentioned where my knowledge of life went back. You probably remember the song, Claudine. Yeah. I mentioned that song to the mm -hmm. jury. Yeah, they probably didn't know hey, what you were talking about. I had to tell them about Claudine with James Earl James Jones and Gladys Knight talking about yeah. keep away from Mr. Welfare. Well, keep away from me, Mr. So that Welfare, came in the man. case and the yeah. jury said, okay, he knows what he's talking about. And I had to mention Isaac Hayes by the time I get to Phoenix where he says seven times I left that woman and seven times I went back. So all of my life experiences come up before a jury. And the reason I mentioned that, they say, well, the reason this young man set the fire because he had a girlfriend who argued with his girlfriend and he left. I said, but hey, people a lot of times mm -hmm. leave, right. break up, come back. Mm -hmm. Isaac Hayes said seven times. Mm -hmm. I left that woman seven times. I came back. I try to use all 
life experiences and understood the jury considered everything and they unanimously agree because sometimes we've been blessed to get hung jurors where one may just say not guilty but all 12 he finally said not guilty and I want to commend Judge Melba Marsh because she ran an even-handed courtroom. Yes. And that's all you want. Judge Melba Marsh is firm but fair. Firm and firm and fair. She's one of yes. the most firm judges down there. But the fairness is always a part of her courtroom. Yes. And I've tried cases in many wrong men in the old days, all the way back from about 1973, where some of the judges weren't quite as fair as a lot of them are nowadays. And when she read the verdict forms, she didn't put emphasis on Guilty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. She read them even handed. Right, right. You can find them guilty or not guilty. And there's nothing about the order that I read them. All judges say that. But she let me try my case. She let the prosecutor try his case. And at the end, the young man had a fair trial. Even if he'd been found guilty of all three counts, I would have said she gave him fairness and justice. And that's what we came for. All right. Let's go to the telephones. 513 381 3838. That's the number here. Or if that line is busy, you can call 513-651-3838. And don't forget, you can see if you're not uh, near TV and you've got a computer, you can log on to WBQC.com and see this program live. Yes, we stream live every Sunday morning, WBQC.com. You can see the show there. You can call somebody out in California and tell them to watch Lincoln Wear Live on their computer at WBQC.com. Let's go to the telephones. Paul, good morning. How are you, Paul? Great. Good. I have a question uh, about equal justice in Cincinnati because I, I don't see as there being any. Go ahead. I had a case uh, several years ago to where a brother-in-law had been setting fires and he got called. And he had got called six years later. He had finally told on himself. And they, they had asked him, well, who all knew about it so we can confirm you said them? And he put my name in it. Make a long story short, I got 5 to 15 for knowing he was setting the fires. He wound up getting probation on oh. two counts of arson. Jeez. And mm. on the courthouse, it says equal justice. But I, I can't see how that is equal. You know, if, if the man set fires, he should have done just as much time right. as I did. I agree. Well, you had a... Well, who was your lawyer? Uh, well, my lawyer had been appointed because I had went oh. to a very, very good lawyer in Cincinnati, um, Hal Ehrenstein. Hal Ehrenstein told me, you should beat the case. They don't have nothing. They right. have this, this guy's, you know, uh, he was a felon anyway. And, you know, they have his testimony against you. I never denied knowing he set them. I never denied that one time. Well, it sounds like you got the chef big time there. All yeah, right. No, hey, Paul, I'll thanks for your call. You come in on that? I can tell you, I know Mr. Aronstein is a great lawyer, excellent lawyer. In fact, he's one of the many lawyers that started in my office years ago, and he and I used to try a murder case together and everything else. He's on his own now. I think it was the president of the local lawyers, et cetera. But he'll have to tell you, too, and I'll tell you, they've always got a case. When a client comes in to tell me, look, they don't have anything on me, so I shouldn't have to pay you this fee, I yeah. said, hey, man, yeah. 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 let me tell you something, brother. When a yeah. man is innocent, yeah. that's when you really got to get down and fight against the odds. Yeah. If a man does time for something he did, hey, brother, that's the way it goes. But if a brother's indeed innocent, now, Lincoln, what we always want the jury to know, when you go to court, there are three kinds of guilt. And a lot of jurors don't recognize this. A lot of people don't realize it. But once I determined and found this out as a lawyer years ago, there's actual guilt. Did you actually do it? There's moral guilt. Are you morally guilty? And then there's legal guilt. Because see, legal guilt determines is there reasonable doubt as to whether or not you did it. Now, even if you did it, a lot of people think, oh, they simply did it. Right. But he was found legally what? Not, Not guilty. guilty. Yeah. That's the way our system of justice works. So when people ask me, how can you get murder resolved and so forth, our system says, if they don't prove it against you by beyond a reasonable doubt, you ought to be found according to law. Not guilty. All right, let's take a quick break and we'll come back. Lincoln Wear Live is the program. We're here every Sunday morning from 10 until 11. My guest this morning, attorney Leslie Isaiah Gaines. And uh, we'll take a break and we'll come back and hear what you have to say right here, back in a moment.
And we are back live. Lincoln Wear Live is a program. And uh, my guest this morning, the godfather of justice, Leslie Isaiah Gaines. We're talking about juries. We're talking about courtroom trials. Have you ever been caught up in one? And, and I tell you, I, I've got this thing about, uh, and, and you probably know some public defenders. You probably, I don't know if you've been a public defender or not. You may have started off as a public defender. But I just say they're overworked underpaid, and anybody who has to use a public defender might not be getting the best defense out there. What do you think about that? I have to tell you this. I know they work hard. I know that, yes, they are overworked. I know, yes, they are overpaid or underpaid, excuse my word. Sometimes their private lawyers who are paid by the public defender's office. It's always under budget that those lawyers work hard, do the very best they can. But there are people, Lincoln, who I know, they know they qualified to really hire their own lawyer. I'm talking about yeah. people in the community. Okay. Yeah. Hey, man, they called me afterwards. Yeah. Called me after they already convicted and sentenced. I don't care who the lawyer. Why didn't you call me in the beginning? Oh, I thought I could go with them. I didn't want to come up with the money to hire a lawyer. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying, man? People got to be frank and real with themselves. But yes, yeah, so those public defenders work hard. They do jobs. They're in that courtroom every day. And a lot of times we go to them for advice because they are closer to it, man. They know the judges. They know a lot that goes on. And a lot of times they get a bad rap. Yeah, a lot of times cases don't come out the way you want it. I don't care who your lawyer is. Sometimes you're going down. Yeah. Sometimes you did it, Lincoln. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you're guilty. Yeah. And I'm just telling you like it is. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes they don't prove it. But one judge I used to love in the old days, I'm going to say it right quick. A judge named Good. Frank Gusweil, and you know I get tongue tied. Like I told the jury, I said, look, I had three strokes and a couple of heart attacks. And I told him, Frank, I said, I get tongue tied. I don't talk as eloquently as I used to. My words trip out the tongue. I said, but well, I'm here to do the best I can for what I got. Yeah. And they accepted me for me, you know what I'm saying, man? But old man Gusweiler, on an aggravated murder case one year, told me, and my young man was standing in front of me and said, I believe you did it. I think you did it. In fact, I'm pretty sure you did it, but they didn't prove it to me mm. beyond a reasonable doubt. So even though you're charged with aggravated murder, not guilty, go home. See, that's what the system of justice yeah. is, man. That wasn't somebody thought you did it or supposed you did it or wish you had done it, but if they don't prove it beyond a reasonable doubt, not guilty, go home. Some jurors uphold that. Some jurors don't, but I love the system of jury trials, man. Give me 12 in the box, black, white, rich, poor, because you try to get to the bottom line of the integrity and try to get the return of fair and just verdict. All right, let's go to uh, Anonymous. Anonymous, how you doing? Next time, just come up with anybody's fake name instead of using the name Anonymous. Okay? Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yes, um, I have a record. And I'm not going to tell no lie. But um, the thing about it is, is a few times I was in court and I just went on and took the lesser sentence just to get out of it. Wait, hold on. Let's, let's stop. Put on the brakes right there. How many times did you end up in court for how many different crimes? Well, I only had like, th it's like three different crimes on my record. Oh, my goodness. Why didn't you stop after the first time? For one, I couldn't afford, okay. The streets. The streets? The streets. Okay. I, I have to change my life around. around. Okay. I understand exactly you know? what the sister is saying. All right. And, mm. and so what's, what's your question? Well, it's more like, um, it's not a question, but a lot of times you just give up. And you know? she is right, because see, I read years ago, Lincoln, a statistic. I don't know if the statistic is still any good or not. But that statistic I read years ago when I did a lot of, lot of jury trials at about 90% of jurors that said found people guilty. Mm -hmm. Now you can find from a lot of this DNA research that they're yeah, yeah. You see how many people are being released, released now? Yeah, because of DNA. After doing right. 30 years right. and 25 years. Yeah. And that's why sometimes there are people that really didn't do it. Yeah. But somebody say you can do 30 years or you can do a year and a half, or you can mm -hmm. do probation, and they say, I got to take care of my family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I understand when people make those considerations, but I like people to come to me and say, Gaines, look, I didn't do it. They can't prove it. Let them give me life. But give me 12 in that yeah, box. I'll say, yeah. just take some guts and some money. And they say, well, can you guarantee me something? I think I can just guarantee right. you and fight for you as hard as I can. 
Bad people call me all oh, lawyers. Are I don't guarantee nobody nothing. Yeah, yeah you can't get. But the hardest work yeah. I can give. Yeah. In fact, I throw them out of the office. Now, the thing that gets me is the guys that are sent to jail who are not guilty. They spend 20 years and then they come up with DNA tests that prove that they were innocent. And then they come back and say, well, I'm not angry at anyone. I'm not. I would be mad as hell if that happened to me. <laughs> I hear what you said. But there are a lot of people that are so afraid of the system. Lincoln, and that's why even sometimes I go down the courtroom A and then argue for bond reduction. And people say, you argue that like it's a murder case. It really is. Because sometimes if you keep a man in jail, yeah. you deprive him of his right to prepare a defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this young man on the three counts of aggravated arson, he got to walk in and out with me and sit at the counsel table with me. Mm -hmm. That makes a difference, man. But sometimes when you're in jail, yeah. up to going to trial, the sheriffs bring, they in, bring you in, you already yeah. look like you're guilty. Yeah. All of these things make people afraid of the system. And that's why judges and lawyers, we have to work together in jurors to make sure people get a fair shake. Yes. All right, let's go back to the telephones. Let's go to Dorothy. Dorothy, good morning. How are you? Oh, good morning. How are you gentlemen today? We're doing great. How are you doing? Your sister. All right. Okay, I don't have a question about me being in jail, but my granddaughter disappeared Friday. Oh. And we <clears throat> called the police. She went skating and <clears throat> she never made it home. And the police told us we couldn't make out a police report. We have to wait to Tuesday because she's probably just a runaway. How old they is she? How She's only 13. She's never been in trouble with anything. Mm. 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 And you don't think she's with any friends or anything we like that? We checked with all her friends and everybody. Mm -hmm. And with the way the streets is now, I'm scared. I really don't know what to mm -hmm. do. But I mean, why couldn't we make a police report? Since I'll tell you, you just be persistent, though. Be persistent. Keep on calling. I know there are policies in place that give people a chance to come back and so forth. But just be persistent. A child at young, the way the streets are now, as you said, I can understand anybody being fearful and anybody being afraid. Thanks for your call. Yeah, just keep, stay on the police department. But still, I'm telling you, I don't know how many times we hear these cases yeah. and they're over somebody's friend's house. I hear you. At yes. the end, but you know, if you think, if you checked with all of her friends and check with the people she went skating with, Ooh, they've yes. got to know something. Uh, Doug, how are you? Uh, I want to know about this O.J. Simpson thing. You know, he was uh, uh, he was convicted in a civil court. My question was, was he guilty? You mean was he guilty in criminal court? You mean the you mean the first trial? The second trial. The second. Oh, trial. the second. He had to pay that money. My question is, was he guilty? Period. Oh, you talking about the the second the, the civil trial right, after right. the first trial, after, the murder after, the murder after, trial? Okay. Absolutely. Well, there's a different standard when you come to a civil case. It's not proof beyond a reasonable doubt, but there are people across the country who wanted O.J. back then yeah. and who wanted him now. There may have been circumstance, Lincoln, because I really don't know. But did I hear on the news they were saying he was found guilty 13 years to the day? Yeah, did yeah, I hear somebody yeah. say that? 13 years to the day. The jury deliberated for 13 hours. And uh, I think it was 13 counts. If I'm not <laughs> right. <laughs> that says something to me. Man, I don't know. His lucky number is not 13. And I hope the jurors deliberated and found what they thought justice to be. Because, you know, the only experience I really had, Lincoln, is in Hamilton County, some jury trials in Butler County, in Claremont County. And I had many folks come to me, man, even black and white clients who say, I'm afraid of a jury. No, I don't want a jury. I'm scared they're going to convict me on my car. I said, look, man, we've had some good success. We've won some. We've lost some. In fact, God has blessed us to win a lot more than our, sure, our share of cases. But I have found, Lincoln, and you know this to be true. I don't care if a man tells me, look, I'm from Norwood or where he's from. People, I believe, have a bottom line of integrity. Down on the inside, man, it's that integrity that I look for in a jury. Now, what about uh, putting your client on the stand? Do you, would you rather put them on the stand or keep them off the stand? Personally, I normally make a decision with the client and the family to put them on the stand. Now, there's a school of thought. Don't put them on. It'll only make it worse. He doesn't have to prove anything. But I tell you this, man, most people want to hear yeah. Both sides yeah. of the story. And I tend as a lawyer after 36 years, 
present the good, the bad, the ugly, the warts and all, and still say, what does justice require? What does justice require? Just like me now, Lincoln, I feel like I'm a better lawyer than I was in my prime back in the 70s. I say that because having been a judge and all, as I told this jury here, I said my speech is not perfect as it used to be. I trip up words, I don't talk fast like I used to, but people hear me a little bit yeah. better. They yeah. <laughs> get a clearer right, picture. Right. <laughs> like I told the court reporter Saturday hey, back in the 70s, they called me Motor Mouse Gaines. And they used to train court reporters to see if they could keep up with Gaines. Mm -hmm. And if they had trouble keeping up with me, maybe the jury wasn't hearing what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. But those years I spent sitting on the bench, when Judge Mars told him I was a former judge and all, I said, Judge, my career used to be built on talking, but now it's built on listening because that's what judges and lawyers do. And you mentioned the Godfather, I'll say this quickly. I didn't get that title until I left the bench. Because when I left the bench and went back into private practice, there were some clients that came in. And that's after I turned all the practice over to attorney laws. And there were people who came in around the 70, what was it? 97, I guess it was. Let's say you've been a lawyer for all these years, you've been a judge, we're just going to call you the godfather. You're not in the courtroom, on the courtroom floor, but you're sitting in the back trying to help make yeah. decisions on cases. And that was something that I, I was honored by being called the godfather of justice, man. So I just wear that with pride and honor and dignity. All right, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back with more of the godfather of justice, Leslie Isaiah Gaines. And we'll take a quick break and come back. We've got Heart Cell, we got Teresa, Brian, and Mel. We'll come back to you in a moment. We are back live, Lincoln Where Live is the program, and I've got the Godfather of Justice, and if you want to talk to him, pick up the phone, call 381-3838. If that line is busy, call 651-3838, and we'll get you in. Let's go to Mel. Mel, you have a question for the Godfather of Justice. Turn your TV down. Yes, I do. Go ahead. You there? Yes. Okay, I got two questions, really. Good morning to you, gentlemen, and God is good all the time. Good morning, my brother. God bless you. Okay, my question is uh, with the situation with the uh, women leaving their kids in the cars, and they decided not to uh, look into that, you know, and uh, things like that. My question is, with the young ladies leaving their kids home to go to work, you know what I mean? They throw them under the jail, but these kids are being left in the cars. You know, if I leave my earth, wind, and fire city in the car, I'm going back to get it. So I know I'm not leaving my child in the car. And the other question was um, with the young man with the hit and run in Bond Hill, hit the mother uh, 2 or 3 in the morning, and he left the scene and said he thought he hit a deer, but he came back. I mean, who's know if he was drunk or what? You know, he slept it off. Yeah, you know? I haven't heard any more about that exactly. case. Exactly. I, I need to check on that. Uh, thanks for reminding me of that. I'll check on that uh, one day next week. Thanks for your call. Yeah, what about the case? Uh, Dieter mm -hmm. says there's no law that he can charge uh, these women with, you know, if they say they forgot and left their kid in the car and, you know, what, what's up with he that? He makes a decision as a prosecutor, as a defense attorney. I know that many times charges are filed on you and you're going in and fight mm -hmm. and say, hey, I forgot, I didn't pay attention, whatever, and let a jury decide guilty or not guilty. Mm -hmm. But I know there have been decisions here in Hamilton County and I think even in Claremont County. Mm -hmm. Under the same circumstances where the prosecutor's judgment was, we're not bringing those cases to trial for whatever reason. But I'm telling you, I have seen cases where a parent may have gone to Kroger's or some store for a minute or going to work and then have a babysitter on time. And that's where they need to fight, go to trial, try to be found not guilty. Some people just can't afford to hire a lawyer, Lincoln. That's the real deal of it. And that's why you're old enough to remember, just call me if you need me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're probably even old enough to remember how it started back in 1979, man, because the economy was almost bad then going into Reaganomics as it is now. And I used to have so many people call me and say, Mr. Gaines, I'm going to hire my son at a murder case, but I know I don't have the money up front. I just know we can't afford to hire on a murder case. Or oh, my son got charged with this or that. And a lot of people said, oh, we just don't have the money. We, we didn't expect that to happen. And God just gave me, well, just call me if you need me. Just call me if you need me. I said, what that meant was, hey, brother, I'll work with you. 
Hey, mother, I know you weren't sitting around waiting on a child to get in trouble, but you called me and God let us make a reasonable plan where you may have a down payment on the case, like on this Austin case. They didn't have the money up front uh-huh. for those three counts of aggravated arson where firefighters were injured and all, but God said just work with them. They called me and said, okay, well, just make a down payment retainer and we'll work it out along the way. And I appreciate that. And he called me Saturday and said, Judge, I'm so happy you got my son found not guilty. I got a bonus blessing I want to give to you Monday. <laughs> That's the kind of clap you like. Yeah. You said you worked with me, mm-hmm. and not only did you work with me, you believed in me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times that's what you try to do as an attorney. All right, let's go back to the telephones. We've got the godfather of justice here, Hardell. Hardell, do you have a question? Good morning. Hello? Yes. Okay, uh, what I'd like to ask is... Um, uh, you got to turn your TV down because it's confusing okay. you. Turn your TV down. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, I'd like to ask, on the attorney that was killed out in Fairfield, oh. are you surprised that they have not had a conviction or anything like that? A conviction? They don't haven't even charged anybody with the murder yet. Thanks for your call. That's a good question. I don't know, brother. I just felt like a dagger went through my heart when you mentioned that. I don't know if you knew Margaret Allen or not, yeah, man. You know, I knew. I'm, I'm talking about to him. I don't okay. know if he knew her, but one of the dearest, sweetest people. Yeah. I met her down there at Lawson and Gaines back in the old days. You were down there with Lawson, man. I met her then, just a genuine, sweet, dear, good person, man. I was out of town on vacation when my assistant Cheryl Coleman said, hey, they found Margaret Allen killed. Man, and it just took something out of me then and now. I don't know what's happening with the case, but. That was really a tragic loss, man, for her, for her entire family, and for this entire community. But is it normal? I mean, okay, uh, I, I know everybody has already said it's probably her boyfriend, but they don't, they don't have any evidence, I guess. Get, what's taking them so long? Uh, I don't know. They're talking frankly, about we got to let science heard. take over. I have not heard, and maybe they're, I don't know if they're waiting on DNA. I don't know. I just frankly don't know. But people ask me all the time, have you heard any more about it? And I frankly have not heard any more. But I just hope that justice is done in yes. that case because that sister, man, that was a good, true sister, yes. man. Uh, Teresa, good morning. How are you? I'm fine. What's your question? I'd like to ask Mr. Gaines, how, can, you open, can you go back and reopen a case, and how long do you have to do that? And my uh, second question is, does he do free consultations? Well, all day long I do too much free consultation, but yes, I do. I even try cases for free. I can't make a living doing that, but you know, I'm from the old school Lincoln, and you met me, I was a legal aid lawyer. Fighting cases down at jury trials and offer really free almost. When I left the legal aid office in 1973, we handled even murder cases. Jury trials, there are people right now who could have gone to the chair. We went to a jury and they're walking free and I see some of them in the streets. Not guilty on aggravated murder, they didn't have no money to pay me. Because you know what, Lincoln? When I went to Howard University Law School, I didn't even know you could make a living as a lawyer. I went because of the sit-ins that we sit in the streets when I was in college. When people coming up there with billy clubs and fire hoses and sinking police dogs on us and threatening to drive cement mixers over us, people told me, hey, go to law school and maybe you can fight some of these things in court. You can fight these laws in court. So, man, I didn't know you could make money being this. And when I talk to Lawson, I said, man, when you take over from me, don't put the money first. Put trying to help somebody. Put trying to do some justice first. I tell young lawyers that talk to me all the time for advice. I say, put trying to help somebody first, and God will bless you. And for I don't know how many years Brother Lawson carried the practice after he took it over from me and helped a lot of people. I know there are a lot of things going on now, but I tell all young lawyers, put your heart first to try to seek justice, and you will be blessed for your work. That's done, well done. All right, let's go to Brian. Brian, good morning. How are you? Uh, I got a question about the troubled teens out here. About the, oh, troubled teens. Go yeah. ahead. What's your question? Um, it's like, you know what I'm saying? They become trouble by like, I say about like 16. Okay, turn your TV down. Everybody that's on the phone now on hold, Turn your TV down. You can listen to the station through your, head, through your telephone, and then you won't have to go through this trouble listening to yourself over again. It confuses you. Okay, what's your question again, Brian? You know, like, you know if we defend ourselves well, 
the law around them, we be in trouble. Or uh, they do something to us, it like they get away with like recreation. What do you mean defend yourself? Who are you defending yourself? I know, I'm, just, I'm just saying like, you know, people be minding their own business and team be jumping on somebody they don't even know. Yeah. It, it go like point to point and get right out. Yeah. And an adult put their hands on a on a team, we get charged in the crime for it. Yeah, life is not fair. You're, you're right about that. Uh, I mean, teenagers, if, when they turn 18, they're pretty much given a second chance. Yeah. Um, but the teenagers are troubled. It, it, it's, I probably put on this old derby head from the government. I'm going to go into deep thought. And I put it on there because when you mention the teens today, man, in this troubled world, it's deep thought required. Man, there's so many problems with deaths in the streets and homicides and shootings and robbers. Not all of our kids are doing that, not all. But there are some, and we're living in fearful times, and you and I, Link, when I say you and I, people our age and old and even younger, we have some responsibility to try to reach out to some of these young people and try to bring them a sense of judgment and wisdom because it's a bad situation. Do I defend myself against what I'm doing? and catch a charge, yeah. or do I let somebody beat me down yeah. or rob me? It's a tough yeah. life and death decision, and that's why, brother, it is not simple. I'm just glad you called in, but always try to be led by your sense of justice. And, and the thing and about it, the right you thing. stay out of harm's way. Yeah, if you stay you out can. of those situations, you know, chances are you won't get caught up in things like that. But, you know, yeah. it's just a matter of who you hang out with and where you hang out. Let's take a break. We'll come right back. I've got the Godfather of Justice, Leslie Isaiah Gaines, has written many books and put out many CDs. He's got them all. Let's take a break. We'll come back to Lincoln Wear Live after this. And we're back live. Lincoln, we're live at the program. Don't forget uh, WBQC.com. You can check us out. We stream live every Sunday morning. So if you know someone who might want to catch the show anywhere around the country or right here in the city, just tell them to log on to WBQC.com and they can check us out. We've got the Godfather of Justice. You've got a new CD out. What's the name of the new CD? Well, it is a CD. You're familiar with our bingo history. And I just want to tell you a minute about that. I guess the first thing was back in 1988 when we stood on Fountain Square involved in a pep rally saying, hey, we're on a roll to the Super Bowl. And a lot of people got involved back then. Then in 1994, I think it was, they did the Shake and Blake. Man, we had the whole city going with Shake and Blake. Now I understand the Bengals are, what are they, 0 and 5? Is that what it is now? Yeah. I yeah. think so. We have come through with something I wrote really a couple of years ago called No Excuses Win to try to help the Bengals get turned around. No excuses, no excuses win. I'll no tell excuses. you that's what it's about. No excuses win. In other words, you don't have to have any excuses. I don't care if you're 0 and 5. Now in that CD, I don't mention any particular name, team by name because this particular song here works from the locker room to the boardroom. Mm. It goes from the scrimmage line to the bottom line. There's a message of life in there. No yeah. excuses. Win, Win, no matter what's up against yeah. you. And I have a version of it also playing on my YouTube site about voting. No excuses. Vote, because we have no excuses. And a lot of times, Lincoln, you know people in the community have a lot of what? Excuses. Yeah, yeah. And then grumble and mm -hmm. complain. Yeah. So if these bingos turn around, you remind them of this little CD you heard about first today right here with Lincoln Ware. No excuses, no excuses, and win. I'm sure some of your clients have came to you and said the same thing. Don't give me an excuses, let's just win. <laughs> That's it. Go <laughs> excuses, no excuses, win. Let's go to Sherry. Sherry, how are you? I'm fine. Good. What's your question? Um, six years ago, I was two months pregnant and um, charged with a felony, too. I wasn't guilty, but there were two girls saying that I was. Uh, I was facing eight years in prison, so in order to avoid going to prison, I pled guilty and took probation. But because now I have a felony, too, on my record, 
um, if ever I need to air, if ever I need to call the police or something, and I have to go, which I did recently, somebody broke into my house and did some violent things, and I had to call the police and go to a court proceeding, they actually used my record against me, and that's six years old and something that I didn't do. Okay, I understand she? I pled guilty and that made me guilty, but... Wait, can't can she have this felony too expunged? You know, Lincoln, we, Cheryl and I in the office this week are doing a lot of research on expungement, helping people get their records cleared. But it's not a simple thing, because if there are other things on your record at all, and then some crimes are not expungable by law, but you can contact an attorney and they'll let you know what's involved and whether or not you're eligible to even try okay, to file Okay, what's a the felony gift. too? What is that? It could carry from two to eight years. I that's mean, but is that uh, like a, 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 that's not a, any, like a murder? No, or? it's not a murder, but it's a very serious charge. Because Ohio is uh, one of the top mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. and three, four, five. So. And the felony level, so a felony two is up top. And a lot of people do plead those out mm -hmm. to try to get probation yeah. and to try to get a reduced sentence. That, as you know, most cases in the system are played out. We have very few cases that actually go to a judge trial or jury trial because most people do get afraid and cut their laws yeah. and say, hey, just save me some time, let me plea. But it carries long range, life changing ramifications. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, so if she can't get that expunged, yeah, then. See, she can check and we can see whether or not yeah. she's eligible. Okay. All right, let's go to Billy. Billy. Yes, please. How you doing, Billy? Good, thank you. What's on your mind? Uh, what happened? Uh, that there was um, uh, Billy was a tenant in the house of a of a of a of a of a, of a, of a landlord. They were both fighting for a possession of the of the of the dwelling. So both accusing each other of threatening each other. Then both uh, the, the Billy called the police. When they called the police, police came out. The police personally observed the landlord and the son threatening the the tenant. Okay. And they were charged of a uh, grand uh, menacing, aggravated menacing. Okay, hold on a second. How about giving your phone number and let Billy give you a call. And uh, to give Leslie Isaiah Gaines a call tomorrow morning, Billy. Write this number down. 961-9900. As my daughter says, 961-9900. That's been our number for years. 961-9900. Billy, oh, yeah. call that number, and uh, Les can spend a little time with you to figure out uh, your problems with the landlord. 961-9900. Write that number down, Billy, and give him a call because uh, uh, let's go to Latanya. Latanya, Hi. how are you? I'm fine. Um, I'd like to know, is there a, a statute of limitations on when someone can press charges uh, uh, felony assault charges on someone and also I'd like to know um, do you have to have two separate attorneys a criminal attorney and a civil attorney to sue a company or also a um, an employee of a company for a felonious assault what I would like uh, Lincoln is for any legal question any legal advice to just call off it. I don't charge people to talk to them. The 961-9900. Yes, sir. Thank I have you. Cheryl there. Cheryl is a great help to me. She helps me. We pull out the law books. We have a number of attorneys. We pull out law books and look up stuff. I hate to give people answers off the yeah. top of my head to complex matters. Just call and say, Judge Gaines says he'll work with me. And if people call my office every day, Lincoln, you know what? God has blessed me to make a good living since 1973 by working with people. Yeah. Because you know, Nowadays, to try a murder case, you can count on it being like $100,000 or more. Wow. I don't know that many people that had that no, kind of money. Uh -uh. But you know what? Over the years, Lincoln, I'll tell you, man, I put on this hat because one year I won a murder case for a brother, and he got mad. I said, why are you mad, man? He said, well, you didn't flip your old hat, and I won the case. Oh. <laughs> can you got about a minute. So, <laughs> at 961 I said, Judge, I need you to work with me. Kenia, you're the final caller. Quickly. What's your question? Hi, how are you? Okay. Um, September the 25th, um, I was assaulted by four people, and I'm three months pregnant. Oh. Okay, my stepdaughter mom called my house, stating, why haven't you and brought my daughter home? She was very upset and cursed and whatnot. So she hung up the phone. About 10 minutes later, I received a phone call from a police officer. 
He asked me, was there any way that I can bring the daughter home? I said, sure. He was like, okay, just drop her off at home. And when I arrived, four people assaulted me. One male picked me up. When I handed the little girl to her mom, he came over. He picked me up and threw me on the ground. While I was down there. Okay, now the what, what's, okay what's your question? What do you need to know? What should I do about the police officer telling me to are drop the sure little girl? Are you sure it was a police officer that called you? Yes. You are sure? How, how are you sure? I'm sure because he stated his name. <laughs> I'm Officer Hall. And you know Officer Hall? Yes, I went up to the police station. Okay. See, nigga, what okay. we try to do is help people with things that you know we don't handle. If they just call the office, 961-9900, talk to Cheryl, she'll tell you, well, we can't help you, but you might talk to this person. We try to be a resource. And you know I told you about these bailout bucks, man. We want, got about uh, two seconds. I just wanted to know. The bailout bailout bucks. bucks, the whole economy is bad. We're going to have bailout bucks down there at Flo, down there at the little restaurant. A lot of people ask, where'd she go? On floors, we call it the Pizza House, not Pizza. Yeah. Uh, you know, floors are big. Uh, I know you're talking Cobbler. about floors on Cobbler on Court Street. And I'm so glad Street. they're right down Court Street now. Bail up both We need to go trolley. and take a break. Back All right. in a moment. Back in a moment. And we're back live. Leslie Isaiah Gaines, want to thank you for joining me this thank morning. You, Appreciate it. 961-9900. Call him if you need him. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. www.lig123.com. lig123.com. All right. Today at noon on 38, action superstar Michelle Yeo and Silver Hawk. A rebroadcast of this show on Channel 25 at 8 o'clock, WOTH Channel 25. And uh, at 9 o'clock following this show, it's uh, professional English soccer we got the Bolton Wanderers against the West Ham United. Check me out Monday through Friday from 10 till 2 on WDBZ, 1230 AM. And we'll see you next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock right here on It's 38 Lincoln Wear Live. We will see you then.